Unlike Doctor Strange, we don't have the ability to look into the future. But we can't stop thinking about the inevitable sequel to the first Doctor Strange movie. It's clear his character is going to play a pivotal role in Endgame. But what's next for the Sorcerer Supreme? We'll take a look at what may happen in Doctor Strange 2 and which comic book character almost made appearance in the first movie. We've spent a long time theorizing what could happen to various members of the Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy following Infinity War. There's a lot of speculation that Tony Stark or Steve Rogers may perish since they've been in the MCU for a long time and it could make sense for their characters. Many people believe the conflict between Bruce Banner and the Incredible Hulk is coming to a head, and we may see a new kind of Hulk in Professor Hulk moving forward. Then there's characters like Loki, Heimdall, Gamora, and Vision who weren't killed due to the snap and may be exceptionally difficult to bring back to life. We also have the characters from the Black Panther and Doctor Strange franchises. Their movies are fairly recent additions to the MCU, and both movies did incredibly well at the box office. Marvel Studios is great at making entertaining movies, and they're not too bad at making money either. Obviously, they're not going to get rid of super profitable franchises that have just begun, so it's safe to say characters like Doctor Strange and T'Challa will find a way back in Avengers Endgame. It seems as though Doctor Strange will play a huge part in the victory over Thanos, even though he didn't survive the decimation. But what happens after the Mad Titan is defeated, and what's left of the Marvel cast of characters once the credits roll? We're certain a sequel to Doctor Strange will be coming out at some point, but the folks at Marvel Studios were non-committal about the details as usual. Not only are they really good at making money, they have building suspense down to an art form at this time. But finally, we got confirmation that Doctor Strange 2 is definitely going to happen. If you like the first movie, you'll be glad to know that director Scott Derrickson has signed on to direct the sequel. As far as a release date goes, don't expect to see that for quite some time. The script will most likely be complete in late 2019, and filming will kick off in spring of 2020. We'll keep you posted about the latest updates so you know when to get your movie ticket. As to what the plot will be about, naturally, Marvel Studios is keeping this quiet as well, but we have some ideas. One of them involves a very important Doctor Strange character that ended up being cut from the first movie. In Doctor Strange, we saw the good guys fighting against the insidious Cassilius, who served the massively powerful Dormammu. But Strange nearly faced off against someone else entirely, and it's someone comic book fans will likely be familiar with. When coming up with the script for Doctor Strange, an obvious choice of villain was Strange's longest-running adversary, Nightmare. Director Scott Derrickson was all for it, but surprisingly, Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige shut it down. Before you get out your torch and pitchfork, we'll tell you why. The movie had a lot to get done within its runtime. It had to introduce the Mystic Arts, many characters, and of course the Time Stone. With all that going on, Feige didn't believe the movie could possibly do justice to such an important and iconic villain. However, by the time Doctor Strange 2 comes out, we'll have seen Strange in his standalone film, Thor Ragnarok, Infinity War, and Endgame, if not a couple of others along the way. This means there might finally be time to introduce movie audiences to the villain Nightmare. If you haven't had the chance to encounter Nightmare on the pages of a comic book, just think of him as an even more powerful Freddy Krueger. And yes, he's also full of wisecracks. He rules over the Dream Dimension, which is a place where humans end up in their sleep. He's the very first villain Doctor Strange ever dealt with, and he rides around on an awesome demon horse named Dream stalker. Nightmare is always on the prowl for ways to increase his power, and he's one threat who shouldn't be underestimated. He's such a powerful enemy that Doctor Strange can't even sleep without putting a protective spell over himself first. Many Marvel movies have more than just one villain, and it seems as though Doctor Strange 2 is going to be going that route. Co-writer Robert Cargill has stated that he prefers to have more than one villain in a movie, and says a familiar face will be returning in the Doctor Strange sequel. Carl Mordo started out as one of the good guys and a devoted follower to the Ancient One, but after learning that she harnessed the power of the Dark Dimension in order to augment her abilities and extend her life, he turned against her, and this also meant turning against Doctor Strange and everything he stood for. When he walked away at the end of the movie, we knew it was only a matter of time before we saw him again on the big screen. According to Cargill, this was something which was discussed with actor Chiwetel Ejiofor during the first movie. He also revealed that Marvel Studios has big plans for Mordo in the MCU. They want him to be much more than a simple villain who appears in a single movie. Cargill claims they plan on taking him to the kind of Loki levels of awesomeness, which is something we'd definitely love to see. Could this bode ill for the possibility of Loki coming back to life during Endgame? It's possible Marvel's gonna build up Mordo to replace Loki's role in the MCU, but we'll have to wait and see. Still, the Mordo in the MCU is very different from the one audiences met in the comic books. In the books, Mordo starts out as a villain and is already scheming to overthrow the Ancient One when he meets Doctor Strange for the first time. But in the movie, Mordo gradually becomes disillusioned with the actions of the supposedly good characters like the Ancient One and Doctor Strange. Don't forget, he's sworn to protect the natural order of things and believes things like using the Time Stone are a serious violation. Being able to relate to Mordo and understanding what turned him into a villain helps us sympathize with him to some degree. 
And really, the most compelling villains are the ones whose motives are understandable, and who can make us feel bad for them even when they do awful things. The Vulture tried to kill Peter Parker, but he was also a loving father and a struggling businessman. Loki was always trying to usurp the throne of Asgard, but he also wanted to make his dad proud of him, which never happened by the way. Sorry, Loki. Mordo's MCU beginnings prove that the MCU is setting him up to be a far more than a single-use villain. Mordo and Strange were once friends and allies, and now they're forced to fight against one another to defend their beliefs. That's compelling and something audiences react strongly to. As for Mordo, one reason he's such a compelling villain is because his powers match up with those of Doctor Strange in many ways. After all, they both study the mystic arts under the tutelage of the Ancient One, but in the comic books we learn that Mordo isn't above resorting to desperate means to augment his power. In the movie, we saw Mordo condemn the Ancient One for using the powers of the Dark Dimension, but in the comics Mordo feels the ends justify the means. He's not above consorting with the likes of Dormammu and other evil entities in order to bring down Doctor Strange. This is something which would obviously translate well to a movie, and we could see him working with someone like Nightmare in order to fulfill his goals. But despite all of this, we've also seen Mordo fight against Dormammu in order to save the Earth. Eventually, years of black magic catch up with him, and Mordo comes down with terminal cancer. That's one of the side effects of magic nobody talks about. But before he perishes, he denounces his evil ways, but since it's a comic book, he eventually comes back to life. Now that we've talked about who Doctor Strange is likely to go up against after Endgame, let's talk about where he may be fighting them. Unfortunately, the answer to that is pretty much anywhere in the universe, and at any point in time. That's the one prediction we can make with 100% confidence. The first Doctor Strange and Infinity War involved the idea of multiple timelines and universes. This has changed the game for the MCU forever, and Doctor Strange more than any other character has the ability to utilize these things. Derrickson claims his goal with the second movie is to create something just as new and exciting as the first Doctor Strange, if not more so. He noted that he's a fan of the original comics, in which Stan Lee and Steve Ditko were constantly pushing the envelope and delving into weird and untraditional storylines. Anything's possible with Doctor Strange, so he urges audiences not to rule anything out. There's also the possibility of seeing Christine Palmer take on a more compelling role in Doctor Strange 2. In the first movie, she plays the love interest of Doctor Strange, but that's really using the term loosely. He spends most of the movie being unkind to her, doesn't appreciate anything she does for him, and just shows up when he needs something from her. There really must be some sorcery at work here to explain what she sees in him. However, Black Panther featured many strong women, and they managed to portray the will-they-or-won't-they romance between T'Challa and Nakia in a compelling way. There were plenty of amazing female characters who didn't feel one dimensional in Black Panther, and it's a shame Doctor Strange treated the character of Christine so poorly. In the comic book, she's part of a group called the Night Nurses, who use their medical prowess to treat patients of supernatural origin or who have sustained untraditional injuries. Actress Rosario Dawson plays a similar character in the show Daredevil, and she's also shown up in Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and The Defenders. She's a much more interesting and well-rounded character with connections to the supernatural, which gives Christine potential if she comes back for Doctor Strange too. But in the comic books, there's another more prolific love interest named Clea. Not only does she eventually marry Doctor Strange, but she also has ties with Dormammu, since she's his niece. Yeah, we know, it's kind of weird to think of creatures like him having a family tree. Writer John Spates admits Clea's definitely on his radar heading into Doctor Strange 2, but says there could be some difficulties adapting her character to the big screen. He describes her as a compelling character, as a foil, a love interest, and a colleague of Doctor Strange's, and she's always carrying with her that width of mystery as to whether she is human and what that means for his relationship with her. In the comic books, Clea meets Doctor Strange when he's traveling through the Dark Dimension in order to defeat Dormammu. She starts out trying to dissuade him from the fight, but ends up up helping him out. As Clea learned, helping out Doctor Strange isn't usually a great move. Dormammu imprisoned her for her insubordination and set about laying waste to Strange, but eventually Dormammu and Strange were forced to work together in order to defeat the Mindless Ones. As a thank you, Dormammu released Clea, and Pinky promised not to invade Earth. That's about as good as a prize as he can get in our opinion. Needless to say, Clea accompanies Strange to Earth, and the two of them fall in love. This is a comic book, so you know there's really no happily ever after, but hey, at least these two crazy kids had some good time kissing and fighting monsters together, right? Honestly, out of all the upcoming Marvel movies, Doctor Strange 2 might be the hardest to make predictions about. When someone has near limitless access to magic and frequently makes otherworldly enemies, it's kind of hard to guess what's going to happen next. But we do know that a considerable amount of time will have passed between the first and second movies. It'll definitely be interesting to see what characters like Strange and Mordo will be doing since the last time we saw them. We know we usually deal with predictions about Avengers Endgame, but what's your take on the second Doctor Strange movie? Do you think he'll have a bigger role in the MCU moving forward? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more MCU content. Thanks for watching.